Okay, today's lesson is the back door, 5-1. These are not direct proofs, but rather indirect. All right, so we're not going to do a frontal assault, but we'll come in at it from the back side. Remember, we have that rule from back in first trimester. It's called the contrapositive, that if you know this conditional to be true, then you can also negate the conclusion and end up with the negation of the um, what you begin with. Some people call this the devil's advocate proof. Others say it's a proof by contradiction. I like this last one. I think it's uh, well-renowned in terms of how you refer to these types of proofs. So let's look at one here. It looks like most ordinary proofs, except you'll notice there's something kind of strange. Yeah, that looks weird. All right, so the idea is we're going to accept this, we're going to accept this, but we're going to take the opposite of what we start with, or what we ended with. Okay? All right, so assume the opposite of the conclusion. Okay? And we also assume the given. Yeah? That is... We're going to assume that all the stuff that I highlight is true. And then we're going to take the proved statement and we're going to flip it on its head. We're going to take the opposite of that statement. Now, what that eventually is going to do is this is going to take us to what we would call a, some kids would say, a break in the universe. Yeah? Technically, it's called a contradiction. Specifically, it contradicts the given or it contradicts some well-known rule. Now, what we would then arrive at is since we have a contradiction, our assumption must be wrong. And AD cannot be congruent to CD, but we then say AD must not be equal to CD. All right? And again, here are those rules. Um, the book says list the possibilities for the conclusion. And obviously there's only two possibilities. Either AD is congruent to CD or AD is not congruent to CD. Then we assume the negation of the desired conclusion. You use chain of reasoning until you reach an impossibility. And that impossibility can be that you negate the given information or you negate some sort of theorem, definition, or known fact. Okay, you arrive at an impossible statement. Then the only remaining possibility is that our original answer is wrong. So here goes a proof of a statement in all the glory. Okay, you're given this and this. Again, we're going to assume opposite of that. And that's going to lead us to a contradiction. It's going to take us a few lines here. All right. So we assume that that is true. And then we also assume that RS and PQ are perpendicular. Okay. Then our, right out of the blocks, we say, okay, they told prove is, does not bisect. So I'm going to say that RP, R, sorry, RS bisects angle R, angle PRQ. Well, if RS does bisect that, we could then say these two angles here, angle one and angle two, would have to be congruent. And that's because by definition of bisector, if you have a bisector, then the angle's got to be the same. All right, well, if the angles are the same, let's see if we can get a couple of triangles to be congruent. This always seems to be a good strategy. So there's the shared side, but reflexive. 
Now I come down here and I say, okay, angle three and four. I think I could set up Asa. So first thing I would need to say, angle three and angle four are right angles. How do I know they're right? Because by definition of perpendicular, okay, those angles have to be right. Then by another right angle, angle three and angle four are congruent. Sorry, not another right angle. That would be just right angle theorem. And then line seven, triangle, uh, PRS is congruent to triangle, QRS. Again, I believe that's the ASA. Finally, PR is congruent to QR because of that famous five letter CPCTC. But this contradicts the given. Now, typically what we do is we, we specifically say what line. Contradictory, eight and two, sorry, eight and one. Okay, they can't be both congruent and not congruent. Therefore, assume Negation is false, is bad. And RS cannot bisect. Of angle PRO. Okay. All right. Finally, there are some problems that ask for coordinates of points based on qualities of the shape. Now notice these sometimes are numbers, zero is our number, but sometimes you get letters, coordinates. So this tells me the distance from here to here is 2a. Well, then this distance here should be the same. Now to know that, you need to know that this shape is a square. And I think they forgot the directions here, but they will tell you something like, the following shape is a so 2a, 2a. Now if it's a square, this distance also must be 2a, so the y coordinate must be 2a. And by the same token, x coordinate is zero, but the y coordinate is still 2a. All right, well, best of luck in your work. Hopefully that goes swimmingly for you in the first assignment of trimester two.